go yeah. with back four o'clock rock and guess what today is wednesday and you know what that means it means energy day here at think tech we already had one energy day show just an hour ago yeah. so our special guest today is carl campania he's a, a what is it recent project manager is true yeah. at university <laughs> of hawaii applied research uh, lab and, and john cole assistant specialist hawaii natural energy institute former uh, commissioner of the PUC. Welcome, you guys. Thanks, Jay. That's our show in chief. And we have a special <laughs> segment coming up really soon with Jared Gannigan. He's an energy advisor at Hawaii Energy, and he has a movie to show us. But before we... Welcome to the show, Jared. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Before we start with that, I just want to say that we received today a press release from uh, Darren Pai of um, Hawaii uh, One Electric about uh, time of use rates. They're actually happening. Um, and that's really interesting. This is, de you know, developed by um, uh, Hawaiian Electric on the direction of the PUC. These rates encourage customers to use electricity when solar power is abundant and enable, uh, you know, cost, infection in cost effective integration of renewable energy. So the bottom line is that you can go in on an optional basis uh, and you can, you can select the time of use rates in Oahu uh, geez, I guess it's starting really soon. Um, you can you can get a rate of 24.1 cents per uh, kilowatt hour all day, but then time of that and that compares to time of use rates, where midday that's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, is 14.9 cents. That's one that's almost 10 cents less. Um, but on peak hours. You pay big time um, between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. You pay 37.3 percent. So if you pick time of use, you better be <laughs> Change careful. Your use. <laughs> and if you have off peak, which is overnight, that's 10 p.m. to 9 a.m. in the morning. That's 23.7, which is just you know like one cent less than the all day rate. So uh, this is going to run for two years. This program and the rates are only for residential customers. Participation is voluntary. And it's limited, so if you're watching, this gives you an advantage to the first 5,000 customers who enroll. Uh, and participating customers receive information on their bills that compare their costs and the normal uh, residential rate for electric. And they can opt out of the program anytime if they feel it's not the right fit for them. If you want to do this, go to www.hawaiianelectric.com slash time of use or call in Oahu, anyway, 548-7311. That's pretty exciting, don't you think? Uh, it happened. It's here. <laughs> okay, but that's, that's kind of interesting. Jared, you're more interesting, actually. Oh. Jared, you bring with you a movie. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. tell us, tell us uh, introduce the movie, then we're going to play the movie. Uh, so yesterday we, uh, we had a manufacturing event. Uh, we partnered with HTDC and the Chamber of Commerce, and we uh, met with the island customers and uh, and the island manufacturers for the save new money for your business event mm -hmm. uh, we reintroduce ourselves as uh, shared services that can really help these customers save money on the electric bill as they pursue energy efficiency um, what's the thing with energy efficiency about getting the word out that's yeah, well, what it is that's you, should, what you, you, know, you know you save energy you save yeah. money yeah. and we uh, we really reach out to uh, the families to, to you know educate them on energy saving lamps and energy saving appliances but it's almost more important to reach out to these uh, these uh, uh, customers, these uh, companies, because they you know they use much more sure. energy. Yeah, sure. they, you're, you're not limited to residential. Yeah, yeah, more potential for energy savings for the for the big users. And you know what they say in Latin? What is that? They say repetitio mater studiorum. <laughs> What's that? You got to repeat it over and over <laughs> again until people get the idea. <laughs> repetitio mater studiorum. <laughs> Let's play the movie. Yeah. Hawaii Energy participated in the Innovate Hawaii Manufacturing Grant Roadshow. The event was focused on helping manufacturers understand how to take advantage of available funding programs here in Hawaii, supporting the manufacturing industry. It's really easy to apply. You only need essentially four to five things. Uh, application, worksheet, which you can find online. Uh, you do need spec sheets um, so that we can review the, the technical specifications and make sure that it meets our program requirements. 
The grant offerings can be used in conjunction with the Hawaii Energy Program, which has money available to businesses for offsetting the cost of energy efficient equipment. For more information on rebates, visit us at hawaiienergy.com slash incentives. Very nice movie and looks like you, you were one of the stars in that movie, Jerry. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you're on your way. Yeah, so we, yeah, we talked about uh, the different programs that we offer, you know, our, our lighting, non-lighting, our custom program, um, gave them some examples of some projects that they might be able to find in the facilities. Um, one of the ones that we talked about is a variable speed drive air compressor. Uh, you know, go from constant to variable. You save a lot of money on one piece of equipment. Um, lighting is a common thing you can find in any facility. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a manufacturing. Retrofit to LEDs, it's a, it's a good good option to look out, look out for. Yeah. All right. Well, very nice. Uh, John, do you have any cross-examination <laughs> you want to ask, Jared? No, just keep educating them. It's the cheapest, best form of uh, energy we yeah. have. So yeah. get as much as you can. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> How about you, Carl? Uh, no, I agree. I agree <laughs> with, with what was said here. Uh, it, it, when going into a project, um, an energy project, when going into a business or, or even a residence, the first thing you want to do are your energy efficiency measures. You want to reduce what your overall load is so that no matter what, your, your demand is smaller. Yeah. So your bill has the so opportunity to be smaller. So that's the first smaller. part of your planning. That should be the first you part of your planning. Plan for what you need, and then make sure you know what you think you need is really what you need, and be efficient when you make that decision. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jared. Thank you. Nice movie, and I'm so glad you're in it. And I, the people are going to be lining up outside for your <laughs> autograph now. I hope so. <laughs> Got a pen? <laughs> <laughs>Ah, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha! Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Law Across the Sea. Please join me every other Monday to hear lawyers from Hawaii discussing ways to reach across the sea and help people and bring people together. Aloha. Hello, I'm Patrick Bratton. Please join me every Thursday at 1 o'clock for Global Connections, where I talk to a variety of guests and range through many issues from contemporary, international, political events, things talking about national security, um, all sorts of international issues, and also more local issues, history, and so on. I look forward to having you join me and talking with some of my guests. Thank you. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday, here on Think Tech Hoi. Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here in Hawaii, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, which is on Tuesdays at three o'clock. Have a great summit. Take care of your mental health. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to your seeing us in the future. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Okay, it's all about energy. This whole state is committed to energy. I was thinking about, you know, the number of people in this state who are familiar with the issue. They may not know the details. They may not know everything that Jared, you know, is, is saying, but they know there's a big issue about it. And I would say it's everybody. You know, that's not the case in other states. The, their percentages of mm -hmm. awareness are way lower. And um, I got to say that this is a state that has made a decision. We've turned a corner somewhere in the last few years. And now it's only a question of finding and executing the details. Yeah. 
So, John, what have we got today? We've entitled this Clean Fuels to Power Progress. <laughs> what are we speaking about? Sure. Today I've asked Carl Campagna of the Applied Research Laboratory at the University of Hawaii to join us to explain a little bit about the lab and what he does. I know he works a lot on clean fuels and biofuels. Um, the theme this month, of course, is what's going on in energy at the University of Hawaii. And ARL is a fairly new part of the university, but I'll let Carl explain that if you want to go ahead. Uh, certainly, <laughs> certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, for, thanks for having me on the show as well for this. Um, so yes, I, I, uh, I have been uh, working with the University of Hawaii Applied Research Lab. Uh, specifically uh, two projects in particular uh, that are sponsored by PACOM or Pacific Command. Um, so that's what I've been working on. But to back up a little bit to what ARL is, the Applied Research Lab. And it was created a few years ago under the construct of what's called a UARC or a University Affiliated Research Center. I remember all the service in David McLean's office about that. Yes. We covered that, by the way. Yes. But now all the service is, is gone, it's away, now we're back to reality again. Back to reality, <laughs> uh, I, well, I, whatever reality means these days. But. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell Point. you on November 8th. <laughs> oh, November, yeah, November 9th is going to be the hangover day, we'll see how that goes. Um, but, so what we've been doing and what, what this entity does, what this center does, is it works with the Navy, with uh, PACOM Pacific Command, and it works with other DOD entities and agencies towards the development of various aspects of, of whatever research of technology um, or, or systems that are needed. So, so it's not just fuel, it's not just energy. It's not just fuel, it's, it's not just, just energy. It's UARC. It's, it's UARC. It can go into a number of different areas. Uh, our specific group that we've been working on is the energy team. And mm -hmm. our energy team has been focusing on a few different things with, I, I suppose, biofuels being the primary. And the reason for that is uh, the two task orders are what they call them, the two projects that we've been working on. Uh, the first one is called GIFT PAC, or G-I-F-T-P-A-C, which stands for Green Initiative Fuel Transition for the Pacific. And uh, that is... G GIFT PAC? GIFT PAC. Yeah, the short name is Omiyage. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> stands for GIFT. Stands for GIFT, okay. okay. Um, so that is... Uh, PACOM is the sponsor for, for that one. And they are specifically trying to... <coughs> Uh, take the last seven years worth of data and research that has been done and include that with national, some global uh, and international and local specific to Hawaii efforts and try to come up with where we are and how we can best achieve a supply chain for a biofuels economy. Uh, so that's... This is not easy. That's not easy. You're talking about, you know, <clears throat> looking everywhere about everything sort of uncovering the entire society, economically, physically, infrastructure, everything. Yes. Well, fortunately, there's a lot of data that has already been done, <coughs> a lot of research that has already been done. So you pull upon that, you do the research to pull it together, and you, and you organize the thoughts, and you try to find the stakeholders, and you bring the stakeholders in, and you talk with them. Through this, we've had a number of meetings, including the Verge event that was in June, mm -hmm. the Apprise event, which was um, coinciding with RIMPAC in July. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been a series of other events, which included uh, the, the uh, aviation or alternative aviation fuels uh, workshop that I was able to attend as well. And uh, so some of these are local, some of these are, are I guess, across the country. Uh, and it's all about getting all of the stakeholders and all of the producers and all of the technology um, I guess, companies uh, and developers to start talking about where they are, what they can do, how we can achieve this. And specifically for Gift Pack, we're trying to address the tropic or subtropic zone. So that's Hawaii and the Pacific region from that perspective. So that's in general what that task order has been. And we can go into that as you would like. Um, but the other contract that we've been working on is... There's more? There is more. The second one that we've been working on is called a JDW2E. That's the acronym. It's the military. So I, I don't have a, a comparative term for that. Okay, well, good. Because <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know where to go with that. Um, JDW2E stands for Joint Deployable Waste to Energy. And the, the purpose behind that is, and what the university and what the Applied Research Lab is providing, is the, is the analysis and technical support for the technology that PACOM is using or selecting to move forward with for this deployable waste to energy system. So essentially think about it this way. Um, the military is out in their war theater 
and they, so we'll call it Afghanistan, for example. Afghanistan, and they have uh, whatever portion of land that they've decided to set up their camp, and they have their boundaries and their fences, and they set up, and they have soldiers on base, working. And you will naturally and inevitably generate trash. You will generate rubbish. You're going to have to do something with that. So what do you do with your waste plan? Up until about a year ago, a year or two ago, they would, do, they would utilize something called a burn pit. And a burn pit is pretty much what it sounds like. You dig a big hole, you throw all the trash in it, and you set it on fire. I think that was invented in the Revolutionary War. I, I, oh, if not before, in fact, <coughs> I think El Cid used it uh, as one of his things about 500 years thank ago. Thank you. I, I acknowledge that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, however, that was banned because... Oh, environmental consideration? No. It, it was actually much more strategic than that. That was banned because... What's the very first thing that happens when you burn something? Smoke. Smoke. And then who can, can see, see where, you, where are? you are? Everybody exactly. can see where you are. Exactly. So yeah. now that was banned. So now we have to come up with a different way of eliminating that waste. And that's what joint deployable waste to energy so is. So what kinds of things would do that? Some kind of pressurized um, you know, heat system? Heat systems, thermal systems, gasification systems. Uh, there's a range of technologies. And that's what PACOM is in the process of doing, is going through all of the various technologies. It has to be useful in the field. Choosing. Yes, it has to be on a small scale. Small scale and, it, and could be scalable, for that matter, as well, yeah, based yeah. on the size of your base. Gee, I'm you know, wondering why it took this long to get to it, actually. It seems, it seems obvious now, looking back. It always does, doesn't it? The good <laughs> it ideas always, always yeah, seem yeah, obvious. Monday morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is two important things, yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, it strikes me that while we speak and while, uh, you know, the organization is, is moving <clears throat> forward, the fact is that the military right now, mostly, 99%, is using fossil fuel, right? Uh, Those carriers I out there, I, I, I read recently that was one carrier they were going to try to turn into. They did more than that. They did more than that. There's something called the Great Green Fleet, mm. and that's uh, what the Navy has put out. And the mm. Navy is one of the agencies that is trying to take the lead with regards to green fuels. Yeah. Uh, they've created, uh, and uh, they were, uh, I believe, a year or two ahead of schedule in creating this Great Green Fleet, where they have multiple ships that are using alternative fuels instead of petroleum fuels. Um, much of that could be biofuels, it could be so ethanol. This is actually happening. It's actually that, happening That's, that's comforting, you know, it's, yes. it's not just talk. Nope. Uh, or research for some futuristic, uh, you know, uh, implementation. No, it is decidedly uh, to help them achieve their mission, as they have stated. I, I've, I've had the fortune of being able to sit in conferences where the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Coast Guard would all get up and tell us how they want to achieve their mission and how energy security is is vital to them achieving their Do mission and how it supplies. Security clearance for this. The, the people watching out there, <laughs> no. do they need, because if they need, no. you know, Carl, say something. No, 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 no. Uh, in fact, these projects are, um, they are in, in no way require any clearance. The subject matter itself is actually publicly available. Mm. Uh, the, the technologies are publicly available. Most of them are, are, are at least attempting to be public companies at some point. Um, but so no, none of that is. So is Hawaii, University of Hawaii and this particular UARC the only one working on these two problems? Or, or is it happening all over the country? Uh, we are the only ones working on this for PACOM, for Pacific Command. Mm. So th this good contract... Good for us, actually. Good for us. And that's, these are the sorts of things that help create jobs uh, through the sure. university, right. help support the university if right. we it's utilize it the right way. From your arc, yeah. Exactly. Uh, but that's one of the problems, not problems, that's one of the challenges that exists with the university in that the university is used to doing their thing <coughs> their way. And uh, myself... In, in a previous life, a year or two ago, I was a contractor. I would be hired. I remember you then. I would be hired by the state then, or the yeah. federal uh, yeah. government to do contracts, <coughs> which is different than receiving a grant to do a study. So the difference is how you perform and the level of performance. And that's one of the challenges, and that's what a UARC is supposed to try to bridge. Well, you know what? what I'm, I'm sure you were about to ask this question, John. And the question is, is this is dual use kind of technology? In other words, you, you discover something or you, under your rubric something is discovered. Um, does that mean that the, uh, the military has control of that technology? Or can I use it? Uh, can, you, can John use it? The intention is for it to be dual use. In fact, if possible, they want multiple uses and multiple outcomes. 
uh, for commercial pur purposes. In fact, what they really want is to spur the commercial, uh, I, I suppose, development of each of these technologies in each of these areas and sectors so that the investor class puts money into that to grow and develop it so that the costs come down. Yeah. What the military does so is they who, have who their owns funding, the so. Who owns the intellectual property at the end of the day? Whoever develops that technology. Even they, though they developed it with federal money? Well, what, uh, it, it depends on the project for one thing. The projects that we're working on, for example, the gift pack project is a supply chain analysis and recommendation Yeah, that's report. not really intellectual that's property. That's not intellectual yeah, property. Yeah. The joint deployable waste to energy project that is would be someone property. else, some third party private entity is developing a technology that PACOM or some of the various agencies within DOD are interested in, so they will put some research dollars into it to help develop that so that it can be commercially developed and sold and used everywhere globally. Well, let's dwell on that and for, for a them. minute. Sure. Sean, it just strikes me that he could walk over the, across the street and talk to you, maybe he is, and <laughs> ask you, well, why don't you guys at HNEI develop a, a waste to energy system? and then present it. So it's more than just a, a study that way. Mm -hmm. It's real technology. I mean, is that happening? Are you working on that? Should you? Can you? Will you? May you? Well, you? I, I assume we could. We, <laughs> to my knowledge, we're not working on any waste energy systems. We do work in the biofuels and biomass mm. energy areas. Mm. And, uh, but we, <laughs> as far as I know, not the waste energy. But it could be. But yeah, I think so. It's possible. If you, if you Match together with the engineering department and so forth, you might be able to pull people together to come up with that. So, so the UARC does involve research as part of its name. Absolutely. And the research happens at UH, right? It hap well, the research happens through <coughs> UH. Whether it's at UH or whether it is at the sponsor's site um, is entirely based on so, what the contract was. So the organization could actually ask the University of oh, let's pick one. Today seems appropriate that I mention uh, the University of uh, Las <coughs> Vegas, uh, Nevada, LN, what is it? NL, UNLV. LN, UNLV. Yeah. Um, I could ask them, right? You could ask them to do research on fuels, uh, for that matter, on waste. If, um, I don't think it works that easily. That's the, the way federal contracting works, it doesn't work that easily. Um, it's, you have to have what's called a vehicle set up, and that's what a UARC is. It's a vehicle to start to create and put programs together mm -hmm. so that we can get some project developed, some piece of research advanced. So is this, is this a relatively new organization and a new effort, or has this been going on for a while? And uh, in either case, where is it going? What's the future of it? Uh, Okay, a couple of questions there. Uh, it's fairly new in that it's, uh, I, I, I can't tell you as I'm not the program director or I'm not the, the executive director of the ARL, um, but it's, it's been around for about three or four years if I understand, perhaps five years, somewhere in that range. It had an initial contract. I'm not sure if you have more details on that or no, but uh, uh, certainly <laughs> I, by all means, if you know. No. <laughs> um, but if, if I understand correctly, it's somewhere within that time frame, And it's based on the initial UARC contract that was created and therefore comes up again to be renewed. So it's not a thing that just continues and goes on, it has to be renewed and therefore you have to be able to show what your continued value and worth is mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, what we've been doing and whatever was being done prior to me being there uh, provides enough opportunity. And then there's the direction going forward and that is entirely based on what the executive director, the current interim executive director is uh, Margo Edwards, Dr. Margo Edwards. And it's, it's her vision at the moment for the direction that, that she would like the ARL to go and in what directions, whether it be unmanned vehicles, uh, which is one area she's interested in, um, uh, uh, remote sensing and remote... Um, uh, um, Margot Edwards, uh, we know her, is yeah. into everything. She's into a lot of different things. She's got her yeah. finger in a lot of different things. And that's what she wants ARL to do, from energy to unmanned vehicles, uh, well, unmanned systems and, and, and so forth, and, in a number of different ways, and then several other areas. So whether it's undersea, uh, remote sensing and, and, and imagery and so forth, a, a range of things. What about jobs? I mean, if I, if I like this idea and I want to be part of this laboratory mm -hmm. and you work, um, how, do I, how do I get involved in it? Do I have to be a scientist? You're not a scientist. I am not a scientist. Not but a scientist. actually, you ask a very important question and a very relevant question for today. And that is, um, I was brought on to uh, support this contract uh, early on as what's called a <coughs> uh, as what's called a casual hire, which means basically temporary. 
So I was given 90 days to ramp up and get the project underway, both of these projects to a certain extent underway. Um, and then my casual hire expired actually September 30th. And they're right now in the process and they just posted up a few days ago the full-time position for that role that I had been supporting. Mm -hmm. uh, it is my, um, I have the ability along with anyone else to apply for that job. And the requirements for that job actually, they did lay out that you need to be an engineer, they want you to be great if you had a master's degree, whether it was um, environmental science or engineering or some other sort of, of engineering science uh, degree. I don't have that, but I do have almost 30 years of experience doing project management, project development. I have 10 years of new product development. Um, I, I have a skill set that it, it's typically put, on, put as or equal experience. So I fit into the or equal experience category. So as I have submitted my application, it's not my job unless I get hired to continue and finish this. John and I will write letters for you, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know that you will. <laughs> I, I, I would ask John as well. But uh, at this point, um, please call uh, Dr. Edwards. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, see, the thing that I get out of this is if we do well, you said this, if we do well in, in this UARC, in this laboratory, um, then maybe there'll be more. There, w there will, in fact, I think it's an easy conclusion. Yes. There will be more, and yes. UH will benefit yes. by, by the realization of the, of the original plan for UARC. That is exactly uh, true, and that's what is wanted from both the, the DOD side and the university side to grow and develop that, uh, yeah. that opportunity. And the lucky thing is that as you can do it, that, you are, that the laboratory is doing it in energy. Yes. You, know, you could be asked exactly. to do something else, too. But this is energy, and so this has a direct effect, hopefully, because of the dual-use aspect right. on energy in our state, you know. Absolutely the can. The most important thing for us. Absolutely can. And for that matter, the gift pack project in, in particular is intended to create, as I mentioned, that supply chain based out of Hawaii. So how do we do that? How do we grow the feedstocks? How do we process the feedstocks? And then how do we provide that fuel to all of the off-takers in the system. And how do we create that while at the same time, side by side, increasing our agricultural food grow opportunities? Okay, that's not easy. <laughs> I said that before. John, yep. close for us, will you? No, I, I'm really excited about some of the work they're doing, um, especially on the energy side. I'm an electricity guy, but I'm also interested in biofuels because they can use for transportation, whether it's you know the Navy or people driving their cars. And we've made such a small dent in that regard that we've got a long way to go. And it would help immensely on the electricity side, given that most of our challenges these days with integration has to do with the variable resources, mainly solar and wind that we're using. So a cost-effective uh, fuel solution that's green will definitely help us all across the board. Thank you, John. Thank you, Carl. Great Thank to you. have you guys down. Thank you. Appreciate it. See you. Thanks.